This week on Pep Talk, public speaking, something a lot of people want to know how to do well. I'm a public speaking coach. I specialize in helping people, particularly uh, entrepreneurs, deliver big stage presentations. What do you think people need to know? People do not spend enough time thinking about their audience. You have got to find a way to take your audience on a journey that they want to be on. To create a talk that's really engaging, you need to drip feed that content. It's got to have that, well, I don't know where this is going. That's the thing that's going to keep people hooked in. So for people who want to get better at public speaking, just run your own event. Go onto Eventbrite, set it up, market it on LinkedIn and provide people with something that they need. Simple as that. Our mission is to help 10 million people start and grow a business for free. We want nothing from you. In Pep Talk, we interview industry leading experts from around the world who share actionable know-how and life lessons. That's why we're excited to partner with GoDaddy to power up Pep Talk. I've been using GoDaddy for years and would promote them on this podcast even if they didn't sponsor us. You can use their free website builder and start your online business at no cost and even get help these days with naming your business. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast notes below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. Welcome, Alex, to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're going to share your knowledge on public speaking, something a lot of people want to know how to do well. And perhaps we could start off by you just taking a minute to explain a little about who you are and what you do. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm a... uh... I'm a public speaking coach. I specialize in helping people, particularly uh, entrepreneurs, uh, deliver big stage presentations. So sometimes that's down the thought leadership route, and other times that's directly related to industry conferences, for example. Um, but I'm a I'm a, a former COO of a, of a startup as well. I spent seven years building a very people heavy business. Uh, before I was doing this. So I kind of, a lot of people make the assumption that public speaking coach must come from a performance background. Nah, not me. I I come from, I very much come from a business background. And so how did it happen that you ended up in this space? Were you born with this knowledge and you felt compelled to share it? How did you get to know how this industry works? (laughs) It's a very good question. I I, uh, to be completely honest with you, Simon, I don't really like public speaking. Even to this day, I don't, you know, I don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh, I hope I've got a presentation to do today. You know, that's just not, not the case. I actually spent the majority of my career avoiding public speaking like the plague. But the previous business that I ran um, and, and co-ran with two others, public speaking, we decided, I didn't decide that, they did, was going to be at the heart of our growth strategy. It was before social media was being used to promote businesses. And we, we ended up spending three months of on the road every single year uh, on our recruitment drive to, to build our, our, our workforce. And um, that involved us delivering speeches on, on campus at universities every day. And if there's one thing I've learned about students, it's they'll absolutely tell you what they really think. You get people heckling you, you get people walking out if they don't like what you're saying. Uh, so it was an amazing training ground. I did seven of those three months tours. And that was really where I learned. And it was it was there that Someone saw me uh, give a presentation and they asked me to speak at a TEDx event. And uh, that was really where my journey started. I ended up running uh, one of TED's local events in southwest London, TEDx Clapham, and just started helping the speakers there. So it happened very organically. And when we eventually drove our previous business through Uh, the hedge backwards, trying to keep it alive with a business model that absolutely wasn't robust enough to to survive and scale. Um, People had already started to recommend me to other people. I think they thought I did it as a job anyway. And so my journey into becoming a public speaking coach was a fairly organic one, I think. So how does it work? Just before we get into, I guess, the nuts and bolts and, and the tips and tricks in public speaking, I'm, I'm always interested in, in our guests, not how they, how they ended up where they are. So just, just try and analyze for a second. So you were COO of, I think it was Champions Life Academy. That's right. And, and so how did, that, how did that turn into, I mean, you mentioned there going on the road and, 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 and I guess being a part of the strategy of the previous company, but a lot of people listening might w- wonder, what's it like to go from, I say, running a big company to, to running what you have now? And I don't know the size of what you have now, but I, 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 is, it, is this a, 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 something you just a passion project that you now do and you don't want to work for a massive company or you have ambitions to grow this into a massive business again? What's, what's, the, what's the strategy? How did it happen? 
it's a it's a really really good question um i think the the first thing to say is the transition from running a business was very people heavy you know we'd have 250 people at different points of the year working for us and i was responsible for them all that was that was my job to then just running a one person band i found the uh, i found it incredibly lonely um it was it wasn't easy i'm not i'm not going to lie it was uh, it was a real culture shock you know suddenly you wake up in the morning you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to see anybody all day you can just basically be in your room this transition into uh, what we've just been through with covid was i was already doing it <laughs> you know so there was no transition that was really necessary for me what was nice was that my my girlfriend at the time now wife uh, she was just able to be at home with me so it was just slightly less lonely i think so loneliness was the big thing that i kind of um, th that I experienced in terms of where this business is going, it's going to be much more people lean. I don't think it needs to have lots of people. And with the technology that's available to, to us all now and the technology that has, um, just been adopted through the circumstances that we found ourselves in, I don't, I don't need to turn this into a massive people heavy business. It's not always about this big scale, um, an excitement that you, you can often see associated with the startup world. Um, I have doubled, my uh the size of my company though uh because my now my wife now works with me so we are twice the size that we were this time 50 percent growth in a year that's impressive <laughs> yes <laughs> no but i think this is a really interesting subject in its own i mean this isn't talked about enough in business i, I have exactly the same feeling I, I i had a company where within our network we had nearly a thousand people working for me and the company and and it sounds glamorous and sounds amazing and wow you know but in reality it was it, i didn't enjoy it it was you know i I've got a team now of seven and I really enjoy that. And and so, yeah. you know, it, that's the team we need to put a podcast together. But this isn't talked about enough, actually. And so I, I think you've gone from two extremes, though. And, and do you think there's some happy medium? I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I just wondered what you know. Do you Because I think being lonely is all can you can also be lonely running a thousand people company. I, I felt lonely running yes. that company at points like I was the only one that, you know, somehow felt I was the only one that you know responsible for the cash flow responsible for making sure we make payroll you know i can't go home and complain to my wife because hey you know she doesn't want to hear that stress i can't complain to my team of course can't complain to your customers so you know you yeah. can feel lonely no matter the size but but there is this image that somehow having a big company is the answer but it but it's not so i guess i'm hoping you're going to say i really love the size of my company now and, and maybe that inspires people to, to think about purposes instead of size uh it's, it's absolutely about purpose um I, I wouldn't have made it through to this point if that wasn't a key part of it. Um, uh, but I think uh, it will the business grow. Yes, but hopefully more from a, an impact perspective and a, a, a reach perspective from my side than, uh, than from the people side. I also think there can be, you know, a lot of guilt associated when particularly when you're working with other entrepreneurs who've been very very successful and grown these these big companies that we hear about in wired and TechCrunch and and so forth and you start to think well is my business worthy is, is, is it the same <laughs> as them um and it takes I, I think it it takes a bit of time and and actually a bit of work working with other people too uh, and and by that i mean coaches and people to to give you perspective and to increase your emotional intelligence to to really get that clarity put in your head i don't think it's something that you can do alone that's for sure and I know how much work you've put into learning your craft. I, uh, for those that are listening all over the world, you know, Alex is, if you ask anybody in the UK who is the leading public speaking coach, they, they will tell you Alex. And, and, and I think what I find really interesting, and I don't want my audience to miss this, is in this kind of, like you say, tech crunch raised a billion and companies worth a billion and all, all of this sort of stories we see as headlines. I think what matters is something what Alex is doing here. You know, you, you can help one person deliver an impactful speech that could help 52 million people that listen to it have a better life. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be about the size of your company. But like you say, the reach that you have is way beyond just the, the, the size of the of your business. Right. And that's why I do what I do. I said at the beginning of this, you know, I don't actually love public speaking. I don't think I want to get up on stage every single day and, and just be in front of audiences. That's for me. It's all about the impact. 
uh, it can have a disproportionate amount of value to the time that you spend having to deliver the talk itself. And it's a force multiplier for all of the other skills that you've got that you can bring to the table. So it's a way of scaling a message. That's, that's where I've, I've seen it work really nicely. One 15, 20 minute talk recorded, put on the internet, put in the right place can be something that um, shouts your sends your message across to people so you can get on and do the other stuff that you've got to do because you've got more to be doing right the olden days a lot of entrepreneurs would get themselves on the speaker circuit and i think actually speakers are working a bit um bit smarter with their time now they're being a little bit pickier about the stages that they might want to speak on and they're thinking well what's the, what's actually the outcome that i want to achieve from this particular thing here and we've got quite an interesting stat on that we often think of social media we need millions and millions of views and some of my talks have gone on to do that but thirty-two thousand and ninety is a really good baseline number. When people come on my thought leadership programs, that's the number I try and instill in them. That is the number of people watching a 15 minute talk that you've delivered nonstop 24 seven for the period of a year. So you don't need these absolutely astronomical, I need to go viral figures for you to have a message that can have an impact and have a success. In fact, I think one of the, one of the most uh, impactful talks that has ever come through has been one that still to this day probably only had about a thousand views um, because they put that talk just in front of the people that need to see it. It's not been about the big numbers for them. So working smart is, uh, is really important for entrepreneurs when they're thinking about their public speaking strategy. I think this is such a great message, Alex, that you're highlighting as well, because in this chase for views and likes and we sometimes lose the purpose, you know, what knowledge you have, for example, if you're listening and you have knowledge, it's about getting it to the people that will find it the most useful, not necessarily everybody. And so uh, I think that that's a, a really great point. Now, I, I want to get into some practical advice on, on public speaking. There's just one more thing I want to ask you before we go there. You mentioned you're working with your partner. Um, I, a lot of people want to, would love to work with their partner. Is there any lessons you've you've learned about you know, working with family any rules you think people should think about because i think there's a lot of listeners that'll be listening right now so i'd love to work with my brother i'd love to work with my partner you know any any lessons you you've got quickly on that before we jump into practical advice on public speaking sure um i'll be completely honest with you i never thought that i would sort of engineer this situation. I never thought that I'd open that door up and for it to become a possibility because I was worried of what of the damage it might do to our relationship. Um, so far it has done anything but that it's made, it's made our relationship stronger. She understands far more about what I've got to go through to, you know, the ins and outs stuff that again, as, as you said to yourself, you wouldn't, you wouldn't take it home with you because they don't want to hear it. <laughs> right? Like there's, there's, other st there's other stuff you want to be talking about. Um, but it has been the best experience. And I think the, the reason why it's been such a good experience so far to this day is because we have been very, very frank with each other about the things that perhaps we'd normally shy away from talking about. How much are we going to pay? How, how much am I going to pay you? How much do I value your time? Uh, yeah, that's quite a difficult conversation to have. Um, uh, but we've just both been very, very honest and open with that. And it's a, it's a forum for discussion. And I think that's a really, really solid basis for us to, to, to build something that, that lasts. I, I really like this subject, by the way. I think for a lot of people, um, loneliness can actually get solved by you, um, including your, your people in your life in your business. It can certainly be a bit of a hack, really. And so I worked with my wife for 15 years and I, Honestly, I felt like when you move in with someone, you know, when you move in with someone, you just another level, you find out their moral code. People don't really hide as much uh, in work. They're kind of ruthless. It's almost like a good thing. And so um, people kind of sh show you who they really are. And, and, and um, I, I really rate this work with your partner thing. Um, my, my learning on this, and I'd love to know your views because I, I might be just my bubble. But um, we, if you have to do separate things, however, you know, you, you can't do the same thing. You need to have a, an area that each of you go and cover and you almost respect each other for those areas is 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 that the case in your case do you, do you think that's true yeah absolutely livy livy we livy coming in last year doubled the amount of revenue that was coming in and it was because i wasn't spending my time doing the things that were stopping me from doing the things that i was really good at 
right? We, we've got a very much a, a complementary skill set from, from that respect. And it's just unleashed <laughs> that my ability to be more creative to, and, and I've got more energy to be able to, to do what I, you know, the coaching, which is the, which is the most important bit. That's not to say I don't have to run other elements of the business. I do, but we do have very clearly defined uh, boundaries on, on that and complementary skill sets, which is, which is why it works. Going and doing the same thing, regardless of whether you're a wife, uh, you're, you're in your partners or not. Uh, particularly thinking back to my champions days is often a recipe for disaster because things just things just fall by the wayside and there's a blame culture that comes in. I just want to take a moment to thank Taylor Brands for sponsoring this podcast. Have you ever been told you can easily start a business that will make money while you sleep only to realize it takes a ton of work to get a business started? Taylor Brands makes starting a business easy. With its AI-powered platform, you can get your business a logo, social media designs, printed merchandise, and so much more, all in just a few clicks. That's why I love Taylor Brands. Whatever your idea is, you can make it look legit in a day and actually start selling through the Taylor Brands platform. For 40% off your first order, check out the links in the podcast notes below and use the code PEP. Now, let's get back to the podcast. Well, look, let's get into some practical things around uh, public speaking. W- where should we start? What do you think people need to know? I-, I think the first thing is your audience is so important. People do not spend enough time thinking about their audience. Um, and the reality is, is your audience got a really long list of things that they'd rather be doing than listening to you speak in any scenario, whether you're delivering a, a presentation internally to your team or whether you're delivering something on a, on a thought leadership what, the ship stage, whatever that might be, you have got to find a way to take your audience on a journey that they want to be on. And uh, starting with where is my audience at and where do I want them to be come the end of my talk is a really good foundational place to, to, to begin. And so for people listening that want to do public speaking, um, so, so once they, okay, let's say identify an audience, do you think, and I know you've been involved in, in the TED movement, but do you think there's a way, how can people get their feet wet, I guess is what I'm asking. What, what are the, perhaps the, the ideas to get, get yourself out there in this space? The surefire easiest way to guarantee you can, uh, you have got an audience to speak in front of is to create one yourself. My business started from doing just that. Um, I, uh, we shut down champions and, uh, I was like, well, I think the public speaking thing is something that I'm going to do. How do I, how do I start that? I've no idea, but you know what I will do is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to run an event at Google campus. I've, n- I've got nothing to sell, no products, nothing, but I'm just going to run an event and I'm going to call it how to, how to get, uh, or how to land a TED talk or TED, TED TEDx talk, I think is what I called it, which incidentally, uh, I got absolutely for by Ted. <laughs> they did not like me running that event. Um, but that's I, a but technical I, term I for my, put... my, uh, my overseas listeners, meaning he got into a lot of trouble, you know, that's a technical term. We might have to bleep <laughs> I'm sorry. It and, um, essentially I just, uh, so I ran this event at Google campus, 160 people, uh, signed up to it. It was completely free to attend. As I said, nothing to sell them. Um, about 80 people turned up. So pretty good conversion, I'd say, generally speaking. And, um, and then two weeks later, I was like, well, maybe there's something I can do with this. And uh, so I just messaged those people who'd actually attended and said, look, I'm thinking about putting this program together. Um, it's, it's a complete trial, but I think I can help you. And that was the formation. That was my MVP product. And the reality of me running that MVP product was I had, I sold the product before I'd created it. And then the morning that I was due to deliver my workshop, I'd write the workshop. So it was very last minute, a lot of this stuff. But I learned so much from that experience. And it gave me my first few case studies. I wasn't charging the earth for it. And uh, it gave me my first group of people. And that was how things that was how things started through. So for people who want to get better at public speaking, um, the first thing you can do is just run your own event. Go on to Eventbrite, set it up, market it on, on LinkedIn. Um, and, and make sure that the event that you're selling is going to provide people with something that they need. Simple as that. I think you've just described pretty much the, um, how to get a business up and running, uh, process, uh, in a nutshell as well there, you know, like an MVP, you know, um, almost the pressure of doing the event makes you write the content. 
<laughs> and then right. and then the event itself you learn from your audience and and you grow from there that that i think that's also the kind of definition of starting a business in many ways and i think actually good public speakers think of their the talk that they're going to deliver whether it's a one off talk or whether it's something that they're going to find themselves delivering regularly like a pitch to investors or whatever it might be the talk itself is a product let's not forget that right um your audience has to get value from uh, from it every good presentation gives value a product gives value to the to the people who are receiving it it's exactly the same and if you can think about your what the, the message that you're crafting like that it will really help and and a tip that i would give people on the message is there's a huge you know if you ever get any training from people they'll often say the best way to communicate is to tell people what you're going to tell them tell them and then tell them what you've just told them and i totally disagree with that the second you have told people what you're going to tell them the audience will then work out what they think you're going to say and they will half switch off i think you're it's a creative talk that's really engaging one of the best things you can do is you need to drip feed that content just like a very good film will or a good book that you're highly engaged and you can't put down it's got to have that well i don't know where this is going what's going to happen next that unpredictable factor and that's the thing that's going to keep people hooked in that's fascinating um i couldn't write down fast enough i think i'm having a free training session right now <laughs> and I, I think that's really good and i noticed it on social media you know things like tiktok tiktoks do really well if you had that hook at the beginning but you don't actually tell yes. people necessarily what you're about to do then you tell a story and at the end people get you know the value the deep value and so um I, so i guess you know uh, the, the systems like tiktok work based a little bit on on the type of thing you're talking about there right and i think the thing that you do really well on tiktok is that it's it's a, it seems like such a small thing but people totally underestimate it it's the title um when people come to, came to me pitching me te- you know i want to speak at your tedx event often what they would come to me with was the title of their talk and or what they thought was the title of their talk and that there's there are two different things the the lesson that you're going to teach people is often different to the title of a talk the title of a talk is the thing that's going to get people to press play but the lesson within is the thing that's going to give them the real depth and uh you need to just like you need to be able to articulate exactly what your core product is um you, you need to be able to work out you need to be able to to say this is the core message of my talk in one sentence and if that sentence lasts more than 10 words then you probably are overcomplicating it and you've got to find a simpler way to talk about it it's got to be easy so everybody listening right now go to the comments put your one sentence explanation for your next ted talk and uh, we'll give you some <laughs> feedback on it well alex will because he's the expert so yeah I'll go ahead and do that right now yeah john Boyd. i think the um one of the things I'd like to know as we, as we conclude today's podcast, um, I wondered if you felt there was any particular way that people could practically open or, or end um, a, a good speech. Do you think there's any like best practices in, in that space? Yes, 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 yes. Two most important parts of the talk. You've got to get people's attention and you've, uh, at the beginning, in the first 30 seconds, you have to get their attention and you've got to do it in a way that makes them want to listen to what it is that you've got to say. If you're too provocative, you can shut people up and they, their defenses can go up. Um, and if you're too slow, hi, everybody, my name's Alex. Today I'm going to talk to you about public speaking. Boring. That's what everybody else does. You've got to, you've got to just th- Push people straight into the deep end um, and and immerse them in in your subject, in your world. So that first 30 seconds is particularly important. And I think uh, a very simple way is to ask a question. Uh, specifically, don't ask a question like um, like all the, all the in- inspirational coaches do. Have you ever felt down in your life? Please put your hands up. I'm not talking about questions like that. I'm talking about ask a question that people aren't necessarily going to know the answer to or one that is broad enough to potentially spark debate you know one of the questions i'll often ask uh, at the beginning of a a workshop that i do uh, what makes a great story pause and then you know people have got all sorts of different answers going through their head but it's just something that's got to make your audience think a little bit and that is the conversation that good public speakers have there's not a verbal conversation going on between a public speaker and the audience it's it's a it's an internal dialogue that's happening and you have an opportunity to to help your audience go through that journey when it comes to closing your talk (laughs) please please don't finish your talk with does anyone have any questions 
uh, no one has ever walked out of a meeting, out of a presentation, being like, you know what, that Q&A, whew, that was amazing. <laughs> That's not what it's about. There's nothing wrong with having a little Q&A in a presentation, but don't make it be the last thing. There's some good, some good research by um, Daniel Kahneman, who wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, which you may, I'm sure you've come across, Simon. And uh, he, he basically was looking at the science of memory versus experience. And regardless of someone's experience of something, if the experience of something, if the last 5% was, was good, they, that is how they remember the whole experience. So rather than finishing on Q&A, you need to finish on 30 seconds to a minute of inspiration, whether it's a, a call to action, a story that you hold back, um, uh, a, a, a pit, painting a picture of your promised land. You know, what's the world going to look like when your ideas come to life? They're the things that will leave your audience, firstly, remembering you, and secondly, giving you the opportunity to get that standing ovation. I feel inspired. I also feel like I'm making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I need to get better. <laughs> um, Alex, why don't you close the podcast? Um, well, we're, based on all that, I'm going to leave you. We're going to pause for a second. We might have to edit out the pause. I don't know, but um, I, I'd like I'd like you to close the podcast. Don't edit today. out the pause. Let's um, just do it. Um, just before I do it, just before we close, <laughs> you rock, Alex, and thank you so much for taking time out to share your knowledge with the audience. Really appreciate it. Over to you. Thanks, Simon. Well, I, I think uh, maybe a really good way to end this is on. I think a lot of entrepreneurs question: Have I got something worth saying? And one of the people that I worked with, I think my first ever paid client, actually, his name was Roger Frampton. He's a movement coach. And uh, he'd landed a TEDx talk. He'd been asked to deliver a TEDx talk. And uh, we spent a, a bit of time just working on his message. He didn't feel like his message was landing. So we just got the message sorted out and all of this stuff. And uh, I was really happy with it. I uh, think my job's done. think, you know, he's going to be great. We'll, uh, you know, we'll see, see how he gets on on stage. And it kind of showed my naivety as a coach, to be completely honest, because I was only doing half the job. And uh, I was in the gym stuffing my, uh, my, my gym bag into the locker. And I get a text from him saying, I'm pulling the plug. I'm calling the organizer. I'm getting out of this event. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. So I panicked, gave him a call and said, under no circumstances do you do that. And we met up and uh, I spent some time explaining how good his talk was and how good he was and what an opportunity he had right now. Anyway, convinced him to give the talk. He gives the talk. Um, he, his talk was the fourth most watched TEDx talk of 2016. And, um, just the other day I, um, it was, it wasn't the other day. That's a total lie. It was about six months ago now. <laughs> time, time flies. It feels like the other day uh, to was... most of us these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, just, just the other day, I was having breakfast, radio on in the background. Chris Evans was saying, I just saw this amazing TED talk last night. It's by a guy called Roger Frampton. Anyway, we're getting him on the show. Two book deals. Um, and he's, you know, his talk is being seen by lots of people. He's 4.6 4. million views later. And it has been a catapult for him, his business, his brand, um, through just something with a message that was essentially don't sit down as much as you do right now. <laughs> he, he communicated it way better than I did just now. But it is, the, the thing I want you to take away from this is uh, don't let yourself get in the way of the opportunities that get thrown at you because you never know who's going to be watching. And just one person watching can transform you and your business's career. And that is why you should deliver presentations and speeches love it. externally as an entrepreneur lean into fear folks fear is a superpower and if you have fear and uh you're not sure what to do maybe give alex a call he'll get you through <laughs> alex thank you so much for taking time been loads of fun thanks simon thanks for listening to pep talk we hope you enjoyed it don't forget to follow The Purposeful Project on all our social media channels where we're giving away even more free business secrets and entrepreneurial value. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsor GoDaddy for powering this podcast. From naming a business to buying a domain name to building your website for free, GoDaddy has you covered. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast note below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. See you next time, entrepreneurs. And remember, you're not alone.